This video is about enabling the SOC operators to ensure that the technology that they have for protecting their database is set up right. Most likely you have your databases front-ended and protected by Guardian appliances and you have those set up to send syslog messages uh, to Curator when uh, violations of the actual policies uh, occur. But you from the SOC, you are not a DBA type of person, but you, you are responsible for the overall security. How can you make sure that those policies are set up right? So I'm going to give you uh, a few uh, best practices. One of the main reasons, is not the main one, uh, that people buy technologies like Guardium is to make sure that only the right people access the right type of data. So one of the things that uh, Guardian does very well is it constantly scans your databases with kind of a regular expression and then finds what is called what are called objects which are representation of sensitive data. Let's say it's a payroll, I find salary data, date of birth, uh, social security number, whatever whatever it is that, that you set those scans to find those objects, Guardian knows where those are. Now what you need to make sure is that, the, that those policies are set up correctly and that not even DBAs can do things like a select or a delete in case of a, a malicious uh, either employee or somebody who takes the credentials of the DBA and can alter view or, or, or delete data. But However, DBAs may may be allowed to do alter for maintenance on those databases. How do you check that? Well, ask your, your uh, Guardian administrator to show you the policies for access uh, for uh, sensitive data and do a test. You, you, you should not take anybody's word for this. because You want to be 100% sure that there are no mistakes being made. Go ahead and try to, from a DBA account, Ask the DBA, do a select on, on, a, on sensitive data and make sure that you get that syslog message being sent to Curator. Another best practice is to restrict the access to the database for those you know, people who have the right access to do so by CDAT range. The idea is, well, if something happens on my network, somebody escalates privileges, gets into a compromised machine and tries to go to the database, if they don't go from the same CDAT range that the subset of addresses that I have selected for my application, let's say that this is a you know, DB2 Oracle uh, database that has a, an application in, on top of it, like SAP or, or whatever, whatever it is, the, the app on top, Make sure that the, DBA, the, the, the Guardian administrator shows you that the, uh, the, uh, those IP ranges that the application uses are the only ones that can actually access the database. And you can actually try to verify that. Try to you know, get access to those databases from a different uh, IP address outside that CDAT range and see if you get that syslog being sent to Curator about that violation. Another important area to watch is those service accounts, those uh, over powerful accounts, besides making sure that they, they, you know, they have strong passwords, uh, that, that you know which those service accounts are. And for example, it might be a very good thing to allow the UBA app in Curator to make those as part of the baseline. So you know you know, the activity and how frequent and how often and how much records each of those uh, service accounts generates in a typical normal day. So when there are variations on it, Curator's UBA component will detect those uh, deviations. It might be a good idea to ask the Guardian Administrator what, what additional actions have you taken to make sure that those service accounts are very well controlled because they are very powerful. 
Another thing that you, be, you should be getting syslog from is when you get f many fails uh, log on exception. For example, five attempts over five minutes. Because that will denote that somebody internally or somebody who compromised an account is actually trying to guess a password to access the database. And the good thing is that Guardium can, uh, you don't have to get one every time that a failed login occurs because that would be bother bothersome. Guardium can actually do what is called an alert per match, in which as part of the policy in Guardium, Guardian will actually combine those and they say that you I, I want 15 uh, logins maximum over a f you know a, a 10 minute period but Guardian will take all of them and then when that threshold is actually reached you get a syslog being sent to curator and you should try that let's make sure that that works and then you do the the, you generate the fail logins and that you get your syslog being sent uh, to curator. Another one is getting notification when SQL errors are actually being made. For example, SQL injection. If you get SQL injection, uh, union select type of uh, uh, traffic going to your database, you may want to know those. You may want to get your syslog message about it because you will, can correlate that with all the aspects on happening on the network that Curator is so good at uh, detecting those and you can try them it's not hard to actually do SQL injection union select type of thing and send it to the forms of that application that has the database underneath and see if you get your uh, syslog message alerting you to that uh, that, that that could be something that, for example, Curator can verify. They say that Curator knows about uh, SQL injection vulnerabilities and, and you get this type of uh, errors being sent. Well, th that Curator can connect the dots and say, well, I know that that host is vulnerable to SQL injection. I'll see SQL errors of the type SQL injection coming. Uh, let me fire an offense uh, to have that investigated. Another important one is uh, to detect previous escalation regarding the actual database, uh, you know, commands like grant, commands like create user, those are things that you may want to monitor closely because they may denote somebody trying to escalate privileges uh, and to, take, uh, uh, to, to grab access to the database that uh, otherwise they should not be getting. Another one is very important is number of records. You get a correlation alert over a period of time in which you say, well, Gadium, keep a track of how many records are being accessed uh, uh, by the people that are allowed to actually ac access the data. And if that number of record exceeds a well-defined threshold, well, that might be something sucking up big amounts of uh, of uh, data. That's a very important uh, type of uh, consideration. And another one that you should not overlook is if you have, and you probably do have, a DR type of environment, make sure, please, make sure that that environment also has this type of protection and you also get this type of messages because those are easy targets since they are DR uh, environments. Normally they are not uh, not normally, uh, this is very abnormal, but uh, there might be a case in which the, the DR system doesn't get as much scrutiny as the normal production environment and the hackers will find it and they will suck up the data from it, uh, will be, which will be almost as good as uh, from the actual production environment. And in all these, please verify these things. Try to generate things that will trigger uh, these policies to fail and make sure that you are getting those messages into curator and it's not that you don't trust the, the integrity of the of the people managing the, the environment uh, this is the best way of actually catching up 
uh, any error, anything that they may have overlooked. And I'm sure that if you have this conversation with the Guardium administrator, you will develop a, a better understanding of both technologies. They will understand better what Curator can do and what Guardian can do, because not even the best technology in the world like this combination, if it's not set up right, it will not give you the protection that you expect and upper management inspects from it.